What if light isn't what we think it is? Sometimes, it moves like a gentle ripple across the vast ocean of space. Other times, it strikes with the precision of a bullet, a single quantum of energy. This is the story of the wave-particle duality, one of the most mind-bending paradoxes in all of physics. A mystery that shattered classical certainty, defied intuition, and gave birth to the quantum world. Before we get too deep into this topic, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. This helps to bring more valuable content to the platform for your knowledge and understanding. Remember, knowledge is power. Now back to the episode. In the 1600s, light was a puzzle begging to be solved. Isaac Newton imagined light as a stream of tiny particles, corpuscles, darting through space. But across the channel, Christian Huygens proposed the opposite, that light moved as a wave, spreading through an invisible ether. For more than a century, their ideas clashed. It wasn't until the early 1800s that Thomas Young stepped into history with a simple, yet revolutionary experiment. The double slit. Young directed a beam of light through two narrow slits and watched the pattern emerge on a distant screen. Instead of two bright lines, as particles would produce, he saw a series of alternating light and dark fringes, an interference pattern, the unmistakable fingerprint of a wave. Light waves were overlapping, reinforcing in some regions and canceling out in others. It was poetic, elegant proof that light behaves like a wave. The world was convinced. Newton's particles were forgotten. Light, it seemed, had revealed its true nature, or so physicists thought, until a quiet revolution arrived in the early 20th century. In 1905, a 26-year-old patent clerk named Albert Einstein examined a strange phenomenon known as the photoelectric effect. When light struck certain metals, electrons were ejected, but only if the light's frequency was high enough. Increasing brightness didn't help, only increasing frequency did. Classical wave theory couldn't explain it. Einstein proposed something radical. Light wasn't just a continuous wave. It was made of discrete packets of energy, quanta, or what we now call photons. The higher the frequency, the more energetic the photon. With that single insight, Einstein revived Newton's particles, but now wrapped in quantum mystery. Light, it seemed, could be both wave and particle. The universe had changed forever. If light could behave like a particle, could matter behave like a wave? In 1924, French physicist Louis de Broglie suggested that everything, even solid matter, has a wavelength proportional to its momentum. His proposal was met with skepticism. But just a few years later, in 1927, experiments by Davison and Germer proved him right. They fired electrons at a crystal of nickel and saw a diffraction pattern identical to that of light waves. Electrons, the building blocks of matter, were interfering with themselves like ripples in a pond. Matter, it turned out, was both localized and spread out, a duality woven into the fabric of existence. The double slit experiment returned, but this time with single electrons. One electron at a time, physicists sent them through the slits. Each electron landed on the screen as a single dot, a particle. But over time, those dots built up the same interference pattern Young had seen a century earlier. Each electron behaved as if it had gone through both slits at once, interfering with itself. When detectors were added to check which slit the electron actually went through, the interference vanished. Simply observing the particle forced it to choose collapsing the wave into a definite outcome. Measurement wasn't just passive observation, it was an act that shaped reality itself. This discovery shook the foundations of science. Niels Bohr proposed that quantum entities exist as probability waves, mathematical descriptions of where a particle might be. Until measured, an electron doesn't have a single position. It exists in a superposition of possibilities. Werner Heisenberg introduced the uncertainty principle. You cannot know both a particle's position and momentum with absolute precision. The universe, it seemed, wasn't deterministic after all. It was probabilistic, fuzzy, 
and deeply strange. Einstein resisted. God does not play dice, he said. Bohr replied, stop telling God what to do. Their debate echoed for decades, between determinism and indeterminacy, between reality as it is and reality as we observe it. The implications of wave-particle duality go far beyond philosophy. It's the foundation of technologies that define our world. Semiconductors, the heart of every computer chip, depend on quantum tunneling. Lasers and LEDs rely on photons behaving as particles. Electron microscopes use wave behavior to see structures smaller than light itself. And quantum computers exploit superposition the same ghostly property revealed in the double-slit experiment. What began as a philosophical curiosity has become the engine of a technological revolution. Wave-particle duality isn't just about physics. It's about the nature of existence itself. Are we observers or participants in shaping the universe? Every time we measure, perceive, or interact, Reality collapses into something definite. Perhaps the deepest truth of quantum mechanics is that the universe isn't made of things, but of possibilities. And within those possibilities lies the infinite mystery of being. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed exploring the quantum universe, please like, subscribe, share, and leave me a comment. What universal mystery would you like to learn about next? Join me next time for more journeys into the hidden fabric of reality.